Hidden Figures is a movie about three African-American women who worked for NASA in the 1960s. They helped put John Glenn, the first American man, into space, but did not receive credit for this or any other brilliant accomplishment of theirs. These women faced sexism and racism not only in the workplace, but in public, at school, and even in their own homes. Black women face a double jeopardy, or what Kimberly Crenshaw defined as intersectionality. I will be referring to the term intersectionality quite a lot during this video, so it is important to note that our course book by Gillis and Jacobs defines intersectionality as a method of analysis that considers how discrimination can vary depending on multiple dimensions. However, Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term, once defined it as a lens through which you can see where power comes and collides, where it interlocks and intersects. It's not simply that there's a race problem here, a gender problem here, and a class of L LGBTQ problem there, but many times that framework er erases what happens to people who are subject to all of these things. Hidden Figures has many examples of racism and sexism. The very first scene shows Catherine explaining her work on a chalkboard in front of a class of nearly all black men. The scene both conforms and challenges stereotypes. Women were seen as inferior during this time period, and very few young women went to school, especially young black women. Schools were segregated during the 60s, so it's no surprise that the classroom was only black students. However, what surprises the audience and what challenges gender stereotypes is the teacher, who can see, you can see in the bottom image. Women usually dominate caretaking roles or teaching positions, so the teacher being male in fact challenges gender stereotypes. According to our course text by Gillis and Jacobs, 98% of kindergarten teachers were women in 2018. I can only imagine this percentage was higher in the 1960s. This trend of men and women dominating certain roles has been termed occupational segregation. Similar to the first scene, we see Catherine much older explaining her work to a group of adult males, this time all white. This is a real life example of sex stratification in employment. This means that men and women are employed at different levels, although they work within the same field. This scene is where Catherine is at an intersection with her gender and race. The white men don't want to listen or work with her before seeing her work, since she is female and because she is black. During the school scene, she is discriminated against for her gender, but here she is discriminated against on the basis of gender and race, showing intersectionality at work. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson are the names of the three black women that worked for NASA. Early on in the movie, we see Dorothy fixing their car engine on the side of the road after it breaks down on their way to work. This challenges gender stereotypes. Men are overrepresented in manual labor jobs, including mechanical work. Seeing a young woman like Dorothy excel in this type of work challenges gender stereotypes. We also see Dorothy working with an IBM mainframe computer later in the movie. She clearly excelled in this type of work, but the other employees at NASA find it hard to believe she knew what she was doing. We could use the term hostile sexism to explain this. Hostile sexism is the idea that men are far more competent than women and therefore should hold higher positions in the workplace and get paid more. Dorothy proves them wrong and eventually gains a superior position working with the IBM machine. The image on the right shows Dorothy working with the machine in the 60s. A scene displayed at the end of the movie shows a white woman by the name of Vivian Mitchell telling Dorothy, I have nothing against y'all. Y'all in this case referring to the black woman working for NASA. Dorothy responds with, I know you believe that. This is very powerful. Here, Dorothy is basically saying that she understands Vivian is not intentionally racist and that Vivian in fact believes she is not racist. However, because of what we have learned in Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist, we know that one cannot be not racist. You can only be racist or anti-racist, and I think this is what Dorothy was getting at in this scene. Vivian falls under what we may call unconscious racism, where she is unaware she's being racist. She's not supporting the black community nor actively working for black rights, therefore she is racist. Lastly, I wanted to speak about something that is not immediately obvious. A book by Akasha Gloria Hull, Patricia Bell Scott, and Barbara Smith captures it really well. The book is titled, All the Women Are White, All Men Are Black, But Some of Us Are Brave. The title alone describes how women in women's studies typically means white women, and how black women are often left out of the conversation when race is in question. The book highlights black feminism and the intersectionality of being both black and a woman. In Hidden Figures, the women face sexism from black men and racism from their white co-workers. The time period of Hidden Figures covers the second wave of feminism. 
This wave in the feminist movement focused on equality and discrimination. The first wave of the movement prioritized white women, but the second wave focused on theories regarding multiple oppressions and coined the term intersectionality. It also worked to create anti-discrimination laws. Although race and gender are socially constructed, they play a major role in society. Hidden Figures highlights how both gender and race affects one's life, but most importantly, highlights the accomplishments of Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, and other black women that went unnoticed in NASA's role in the space race.